I would like to invite Mr. Ian McRae to accept this Hamilton Boys High School Hall of Fame award in recognition of his outstanding contribution as a leader in business and the health software industry. One thing I uh, noticed as I walked on the, uh, into the hall this morning, the hall has got a lot smaller and you guys have got a lot bigger, so it's no wonder you're so good at rugby. Uh, so, um, in fact, actually, um, this is probably my first time uh, ever on stage here at the school, really. So, um, I started the started Hamlin Boys in 1972, so uh, 43 years later, um, I've, I've eventually got here. So, there we go. Um, and I could probably see that I wasn't exactly the, uh, an exemplar student. Um, I found, I found uh, uh, two years of Latin and French torture, I and mean, yet they do Latin and French being on the top class, and being an undiagnosed dyslexic, I found learning, learning all the uh, Latin, Latin, Latin words was horrible. Um, and um, I was too small to make the first thing, so that, wasn't, that didn't happen. Um, and I got to actually came quite a lot, um, um, in fact, well, actually a lot. <laughs> in fact, I was the most came third former, I think. Um, so when the school rang me, rang my PA and said, said to uh, Jennifer, you know, the school has um, uh, uh, just invited you to join the Hall of Fame, I said to her, Jennifer, uh, I think they might have got the wrong in the cray. So anyhow, um, so, uh, anyhow it's good to be here today. Uh, I'd like to thank the school very much for the honour. Um, and for those of you um, who haven't always been uh, model students, there's still a hope, okay? There we go. Uh, so, uh, Hamlin Boys, Hamlin Boys uh, transformed my life. Uh, I, came, I came to the school here, I grew up on a farm in a place called Waringa. Nobody would know what Waringa is. It's near Tikawada. Oh, this guy does. Awesome. Are you from Waringa? Oh, okay. I went to Hamlin uh, Tikawada High School for the first couple of years. Um, so, so um, um, anyhow, we got the sidetrack there. Um, uh, five years later, uh, I left and I was a pretty self sufficient, uh, very determined individual. Um, and uh, actually, when I was at the school, the school was going through a state of transition. Um, the year before I started, there were certain protests about the compulsory wearing of school caps. So um, back then, this whole hall would have been, uh, all you guys would have been wearing caps, okay? So it was certain protests, and eventually the caps got, um, uh, were no longer compulsory. And, and at Argyle House, we had to go to church every week. Um, and um, there was a contentious rule about the length of your hair. Uh, your hair could not be over your collar, and people would go around and check uh, your hair length. Um, and um, uh, you guys remember, remember that? Yeah. Um, so, um, but other matters, things were pretty relaxed. Um, so, at the age of 16, um, one of the hostile masters and teachers, and we call him Flash Gordon, uh, lent me his 303 rifle. And three of us students went down to the Uruwiras to go hunting. And having grown up on a farm, that seemed pretty normal to me. We didn't even bother telling our parents we were doing it. Um, so um, I suspect things have changed, changed a fair bit since then. Um, actually, I've shot it here, by the way. It's really good. Um, um, uh, after leaving Hamlet Boys, uh, I went to Auckland University. I, I gained a couple of engineering degrees. Uh, my thesis was on, on Antarctic ice shelves. I know a lot about Antarctic ice shelves. Um, and uh, but, the, but, the, but the reason I I, 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 I took that subject because I got, I got to go to Antarctica, so that was a real, real adventure. Um, in in, in uh, 1994, we set up Orion Health with uh, four staff, and uh, today we have approximately 1,200, almost 1,300 staff, uh, and about 30 offices around the world in places like Paris, Madrid, um, 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 Parma, um, uh, uh, we're about to Toronto. Oh, we have an office in the, uh, St. John's in Newfoundland. It's, it's, it's the far um, right hand side of Canada, um, next stop is the Atlantic Ocean. So these are, so in fact, um, we, 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 we see the opening offices all the time. Uh, we were the first uh, uh, company in Auckland uh, uh, to have a commercial internet connection. Yep. We had to write to Europe and ask permission uh, to use internet for research, because you could only use it for research back then. And so we set up a link to Auckland University, the 9K6, uh, circuit. We put two PCs back to back and over an analog circuit. Um, so that, that's, that link was 6,000 times slower than the link, the link uh, we have at home today. 
Uh, anyhow, we use that. We used to sell our software over when we weren't allowed to sell software. So we were one of the first uh, software spammers on internet. Um, and those, but those days we used to sell software for like $5,000 a copy. These days we're selling a total contract value of some of our projects will be uh, 20 to $30 million US. Um, and they're huge projects. An example would be Cal California Calindex, which is taking all the patients in California, getting all their health information, and putting it into a, a single big um, da database in Amazon. And so that's absolutely a huge project. So we've come a long way. Um, and you know, from a little New Zealand firm to be uh, sort of the leading vendor in this area globally, um, you know, we're, we're pretty pleased with that. So the last 22 years has been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, Orion Health is New Zealand's largest software vendor. Uh, last year we listed uh, on the uh, New Zealand and Australian stock exchanges. Um, um, and uh, that was an interesting experience. Uh, so it's finally just a, just a 30 second promotion for our, for our sector. So I know some of you will be leaving here soon and or you're trying to make up your minds as to what you, what you want to do. So, so currently uh, New Zealand needs about 10,000 IT graduates uh, a year and that's double the number that's been produced out of schools. Um, there's about a 12 to 15,000 uh, shortfall as well. Uh, so if it wasn't for immigration, the sector would have a huge, huge problem. Um, so Trade Me, uh, Peter Osborne there says there's about uh, four out of every top paying jobs on Trade Me uh, are IT related. Um, if you look at the uh, jobs in science, all the sciences, biochem and physics, and look at the jobs in information science, for every science job there is five uh, jobs in information science. So five IT jobs for every job in those other sciences. Um, also the pay is um, significantly high as well. Um, it's north of 100,000, whereas uh, in the other sciences it's about 65. And so, so it is a sector where it's possible to be very, very uh, entrepreneurial. Does it mean time's up, does it? Probably. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so, so it's very possibly very, very entrepreneurial. I mean, you have companies like Orion, uh, Trade Me, Zero, and others, um, and uh, these companies are doing great things locally and internationally. Um, so, so for me, Hamlet always gave me a lot of skills that needed later on in life. Um, it, was, it was a great experience. So, I'd like to thank everybody and thank you very much for the support. It's wonderful. Thank you.